Simple Car Guy here and today we are checking out this Lamto wireless CarPlay and Android Auto unit that can be added to any car. With a low profile design and lots of built-in features, is this something you should be adding to your car? Let's find out. We're going to get this unit installed and tested in just a minute, but first let's see what comes included when you buy this. It comes packaged in a nice box with not too much information on it, but we do get a quick start guide, a suction cup bracket, some clips to organize the power wire, a replacement adhesive for the original base that comes pre-installed, a full manual with steps on how to connect to the unit and enable CarPlay. I will show you that live as it's very easy to do. We also get the auxiliary cable, 12 volt adapter, a trim removal tool, a warranty card, and finally the unit itself. So there's actually not too much to this unit, which is pretty awesome actually. It's gonna be very easy to set up. Uh, first, let's take off this protective film so we are actually looking at the screen. On the top here we have the power button and the reset button. We have the microphone hole right there. And then on this side we have the auxiliary port. So we're going to plug that into the car unless we're using FM. And then we have the Type-C connection for power. We also get this second bracket so we can uh, mount it on uh, the windshield if we like or we can use the original bracket that came with it just like this one that has the adhesive in the bottom and then stick it to your dash obviously in this car the airbags here so i would definitely not recommend doing so right you wouldn't want to put it right here but it depends on your car so if you have an older car that doesn't have airbags that's completely fine then if you don't have an original screen in the vehicle you can put it right in the middle or some people even choose to put one on top of the other so you have this like original screen for your regular items uh, like radio and things like that and then you would use this for your car play pretty cool idea actually and i've definitely seen people do that in my case i'm going to be using the suction cup since this will not be a permanent installation i think i'm just going to install it somewhere right here so it's pretty easy to manage very easy to install clip it in and there you go Perfect, now it's installed. It seems pretty stable. We can tighten down some of the clips in the back there so it'll be even more stable, but I think that's pretty good. To get this thing powered on, all we really have to do is just plug in the power cable and that's gonna be the USB Type-C. I believe that's on the other side. There it is. Plug that in and it should turn on. Okay, so it's turning on now. Got a Bugatti, I believe, picture on it. Oh, okay, so the built-in speaker is fairly loud. That's good to see. And wow, that was quick to boot up too, if you noticed. Uh, it just took a few seconds, now it's turned on. We're gonna look into this interface in just a minute, but first let's see how easy it is to connect our phone. First thing I'm gonna do is go to Apple CarPlay, just on the main menu. Now it's telling me go to uh, Bluetooth on your phone and connect to the specific name. I'm gonna go into Bluetooth and there it is. So T86 something something. All right, now it's asking if you'd like to pair. Yes, pair, allow contact sync. Let's see, we're gonna do this live. Use CarPlay. And there it is. So what, that took maybe 15 seconds. So this phone has never been connected to this device before. This was the first time I used it and you can see it only took a few seconds to set up. Now that's pretty impressive. Even some of the uh, OEM systems in cars are not this easy to set up. Anyway, if this is all you need this device for, well, now it just works, right? So you have your standard uh, Apple CarPlay, you have your maps. So if you wanna open up your maps, or have the split screen, or if you wanna play your music. So you can just go ahead and start playing your music. There it is. Obviously you can have whatever other items you would normally use on a CarPlay device, and it would just work through this unit. It has a built-in speaker, so you can just use it like this, but obviously we wanna connect it to our car for a much better audio quality, or at least much more volume. How can we do that? Well, the simplest way is just to use this auxiliary cable. The second way is to use the FM transmitter, and I'll show you both. All right, so at the moment I have a live stream audio coming from my phone to this unit, and it's playing through the speaker in the back. We can hear that by just adjusting the volume. 
I don't know if this is copyrighted material or not, so I don't want to risk it. I'm not going to turn it up too much, but we can also see that the auxiliary cable has been connected to the vehicle and the other end is here in my hand. So what we're going to do is just plug it into this unit just like that. And it says that auxiliary has been inserted and it's going to switch audio to basically to the car's audio. I'm going to turn it up. And there you go. The audio is now coming through the car. All right, so I spent a few seconds listening to the actual audio coming from the car, and I must say it's pretty good. It's neat. I mean, it's not perfect. There might be a tiny bit of over amplification at the very top. So if you crank it up all the way, you can hear a little bit of kind of like a distortion, but if you stay within like, I would say that range, it sounds pretty good. Now let's try the other way of connecting this device to the car that actually will allow you to connect to any vehicle because obviously not every single vehicle has an auxiliary port but almost every vehicle i have ever seen has a radio so as long as your car has an fm receiver this should work as well let's give it a try so how would we connect this device using the fm transmitter well that's pretty simple as well so on the device we're going to go to fm transmitter just right there at the moment it's turned off i have set the car to 87.9 seems like there's nothing happening on that one so we just tuned into an unused frequency okay now i'm going to do the same on this device so we're going to go to 87.9 come on there it is and turn the volume up and turn the fm transmitter on and look at that we are now listening to our phone's audio through the FM transmitter wirelessly. How cool is that? This is so cool. Like the auxiliary cable is still unplugged and the audio is coming through the car. Let me see how the quality is now. Honestly, I am very impressed. The audio is very crisp. It's basically just as good as through the cable. Maybe even a little bit better, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's awesome. And as we can see, if we go back, our audio is still connected through, or our phone is still connected to the device. We can still do everything else, go to our maps or to other options, whatever, audio books, calendar, whatever else you have on your phone that works with CarPlay will work through this as well. Very impressed so far, very impressed. So basically you have three different options to get the audio out of your phone. You can use the built-in speaker on the device. I mean, it's great for when you need it, but probably not the best quality. Your phone might have a better speaker actually. Second, use the auxiliary cable. Third, use the FM transmitter and the FM station on your car. And all three work pretty well, very nice. Lastly, let's talk about the interface and some of the settings. And yes, there will be a little bit of a glare on the screen right now. And this is basically the worst case scenario because we have the sun just right there pointing at the camera while the screen is in front of it. So it shows you how well it can do even in this situation. To my eye, it actually looks really nice. It looks like an IPS display. I'm not sure if it is, it probably isn't, but it does look very crisp and there's depth to this image. But yes, this interface, pretty cool and pretty simple. So we have the home button, just takes you to this screen right here. We have brightness. We can lower the brightness and raise it all the way up if we like. One thing to note is that there is no auto brightness. This is a manual brightness only. So at night you might want to turn it down so it's not blinding you, you know, when you're driving in the dark. Now here we have the FM station. If we switch from or if we turn off the FM transmitter off, so if we go here and turn that off, that switches to an audio level so we can adjust the volume so we can adjust the volume just like that instead of using the FM. So that's pretty cool. It changes based on what you're doing. Now we have a power button. So that's just gonna turn off the screen. Same thing as the one on the top. Here on the left, we have the Apple CarPlay button. We have Android Auto. Unfortunately, don't have an Android phone to show you how that works exactly, but I've seen people using it and it's basically the same as Apple CarPlay, just as simple to set up. FM transmitter, we already saw it. This fourth option here is Bluetooth and that's basically allowing us to connect a phone that isn't uh, Apple CarPlay capable or Android Auto capable and just use it as a regular Bluetooth device. So this would now act as a Bluetooth 
uh, adapter basically you would connect your phone to this and then you can use the FM transmitter to connect it to the vehicle to be clear you cannot use this Bluetooth to connect to the vehicle to transmit audio using Bluetooth from this device to the vehicle. The device would have to have two Bluetooth adapters, one to connect the phone and the other one to connect to the vehicle. This one doesn't have that. And then the last one is settings. Very simple here. We have a screensaver that can turn on after a certain amount of time, a few different languages. So if that's important to you, you can switch the languages and we can factory reset it or uh, check out the firmware version. And yeah, that's basically it. Pretty simple device, but it does exactly what it says it will do on the box. And honestly, that's pretty awesome. It doesn't try to hide anything from you and it just gives you exactly what it says it will. I mean, what else can you ask for? Typically, this item goes for a little over $200, but it has been on sale for a couple of weeks now at only $120, which is a very, very good price if you ask me, especially because this is available through Amazon and can be delivered in two days rather than a couple of weeks if you buy from a place like AliExpress. Another really cool thing that they have started doing is that Normally it would just come with this, but people were complaining that it's very hard to move and this is a permanent installation in a way. So they have started including this suction cup uh, bracket, which I really like. I mean, that's pretty cool how it works. You can just stick it on the windshield and it sticks there. You can take it off and then hide it if you live in a bad neighborhood or something like that and you wouldn't want it to be just, uh, you know, on your windshield or installed invisible to the public. I have to say that I also really like this 10 inch display. It's a very slim design, so it's not gonna obstruct the view when driving. And you can even mount it much lower than I have here because I've only done it for demonstration, right? You, I would mount it almost flat on, you know, on the dash right here, so it's not obstructing any view. And this will allow you to do that since it's so, you know, narrow, it's not like a, four or five inch tall piece. But yeah, that's about all I really have to say about this unit. I'm impressed with the audio quality, the quality of this screen, the design, and how easy it was to connect and set up. It also has a very long cable, so you can route it all the way around the windshield if you wanna mount it somewhere higher or something like that. Also, the price, I mean, you can't beat the price in this unit, so do check out the links down in the description. I would love to hear your opinion on it, so leave your comments down below as well. If you'd like to check out other units like this or other reviews I've done in the past, click on this playlist or this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.